a soil in its dense state has very little air voids present into it. If a soil in such a dense state is applied with heavy structural loads, it can take them with very little settlement. As there is very little space available for the soil particles to settle into. But if same soil is in loose state, there is plenty of space available for the particles to move and settle down. It is undesirable for a structure to settle more than its permissible limits because it may generate problems of cracking and perhaps structural failure. So prior to any construction, we try to determine the denseness of the natural soil. The degree of compaction of a soil is measured in terms of dry unit weight, which is the amount of soil solids that can be packed in a unit volume of the soil. The unit weight of a soil also provides an idea about its strength, compressibility and permeability. Higher unit weights proposes higher strength, lower compressibilities and lower permeabilities. But if two different soils have the same unit weights, they may produce different engineering properties. So there is a parameter which defines the degree of denseness of the coarse grain soil which is called relative density. Properties of soil that help in identification and classification of soil are called index properties. Among all the index properties, Relative density is the most important property of the cohesionless soil. Cohesionless soils are those which particles do not stick with each other. These soils are generally coarse grain soils such as gravels and sand. Relative density which is also called the density index is denoted as DR and ID. It is the degree of denseness or looseness of natural deposits of coarse grain soils. Mathematically, it is defined as E max minus E divided by E max minus E min multiplied by 100. Here, E is the void ratio of the soil at the field conditions. We have learned void ratio to define as volume of voids divided by volume of solids. E max is the maximum void ratio of the same soil, which can be obtained if all the soil particles occupy the loosest condition. In this condition, soil has maximum amount of volume of voids. Similarly, E min is the minimum void ratio of the same soil when it is in its densest form. In the loosest state, relative density will be zero because value of E will be equal to E max and in the densest condition it will be 100% as E will be E minimum. On the basis of relative density, coarse grain soils can be divided into 5 categories. If the value of a relative density obtained is less than 15, soil is identified as very loose soil. If the value is between 35 and 65, soil is medium dense. And if it has value higher than 85, soil is classified as very dense. And similarly, other value ranges are classified as loose and dense. So how do we determine the relative density values? Well, in this formula, we see void ratios at different denseness of soil. But it is not easy to determine the void ratio of these samples because it is difficult to measure the volume of solids. But it is convenient to express void ratio in terms of dry unit weight. We know this relationship. For the dry mass of soil, saturation will be zero. So after rearranging it a little, we can find the void ratio in terms of dry unit weight. Substitute this in the equation and solve a little to represent a relative density in the form of dry unit weight. 
Now we can determine the dry unit weight of differently dense soil masses experimentally as following. We take the oven dried soil sample. If it contains bigger lumps, then we pulverize it. Then we take a metal mold. Its height and diameter are noted down to calculate its volume. Mold is weight and weight is noted as W1. Then we pour the dry pulverized soil into the mold using a pouring device. It should be held this way that height of the free fall of the soil is always 25 mm. This way it is considered that soil is in its loosest condition. We overfill the mold and using some rod or plate soil surface is leveled up to the brim. This loosely filled soil mold is weighed again and weight is noted as W2. Now remove the soil content from the mold and attach the sleeve of the mold and fill the soil up to the sleeve's brim. Place this arrangement on a vibrator deck and place a surcharge load on the soil surface. Then vibrate it for 8 minutes. If soil's top surface falls below mold's brim, we add more soil and vibrate it for another 8 minutes. This way soil can be obtained in compacted state which has very low volume of voids. Remove the sleeve and trim the soil surface. Then take the weight of this mold again and say it as W3. Now by using all these measured weights and volume, we can calculate maximum and minimum dry unit weight as weight of soil in different conditions divided by volume of mold. Now in the equation of relative density, only unknown is the dry unit weight of soil in its natural conditions. We can calculate it by either core cutter method or sand replacement method. Both of them have already been discussed in our other videos. Substituting all the values in the formula, relative density can be calculated and hence degree of denseness of coarse grain soil can be estimated. Relative density for coarse grain soils is equivalent to the relative consistency of clay soils. That we are going to discuss in our coming videos. Thank you.